नमो तगवत अर्हत सबुदस नमो तगवत अर्हत सबुदस नमो तगवत अर्हत सबुदस पे हु मिस टू द ब्लेस रोन डियर फ्रेंड्स टुडे मैं थर्टी फर्स्ट ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फोर एट दमा सुखा मेडिटेशन सेंटर सो आई यू लाइक टू डिलीवर एंड दमा टॉक सूत्र नंबर फिफ्टी टू फ्रॉम माजी मैंने कहा अट्ठा का नगर सूत्र सो इन दिस सूत्र especially who are the advanced meditator so you will understand the venerable ananda explain all the jhanas step by step to the the householder householder dasama from athaganagara so athaganagara is the one place where the householder was living so this afternoon we were talking um you can make make note and if you have any questions you can ask me after my talk okay so so in this sutta the householder he was very religious and then of course he has also knowledge about uh, buddhism so he was looking what is venerable ananda and he went to someone he asked him where is venerable ananda right now then someone said he is living in the veluva gamaka in near visali then the householder went to him and he asked how can liberate from the suffering how can someone attain nibbana then he asks the many questions and venerable ananda explain everything all the janas and then when you attain the first jhana even in the first jhana you have potential to attain the nibbana so in this sutta the venerable ananda explain this is not the venerable ananda's teaching but this is the buddha's teaching so whenever buddha went for delivering dhamma talk the venerable ananda was present so one day when the blessed one said who can be my attendant the many monks went to the blessed one okay i want to be your attendant i want to be your attendant the buddha was quiet and then someone said to ananda venerable ananda everybody went to the buddha to be buddha's attendants but you didn't go to him and the buddha said ananda only ananda can be my attendants then ananda said i have some conditions to become the buddha's attendants what condition if the buddha go outside for delivering dhamma talk he has to take me with him if he doesn't take me with him wherever he will go for delivering the dhamma talk so when he will come back again at the monastery same dhamma talk he has to deliver to me that way i can be buddha's attendant otherwise no so the most of the sutta you will see thus have i heard thus have i heard 
this word this is the venerable ananda's word during the first buddhist council the venerable ananda recited the whole dhamma because he could memorize his memorization was very you know he could memorize very <laughs> his memory was very sharp you know so he could memorize all the dhamma and the leader of the sangha mahakasapa said venerable ananda must be present in the buddhist council because only venerable ananda knows that the whole dhamma so in the first buddhist council he said evam me sutam thus have i heard so whenever you read any sutta then you will see evam me sutam thus have i heard that one recited by the venerable ananda okay i'm going to read this sutta then before reading this sutta i want to know if somebody know please raise the hand and then you can answer what are the five hindrances okay what is it uh, upekkananda okay here i want to say the i think this morning afternoon uh, after finishing the ordination ceremony i watched the video i think i make one mistake that one is karunananda instead of karunananda i said mattananda right it is, so i think i make mistake that your name is karunananda right yeah but i said mattananda and he said amavante what your name is karunananda okay did i say that no you said right yeah. i said right yeah no, right okay i think we said it for you though i make it wrong you, yes you made a mistake yeah really mistake. well i made mistake which one you uh, said mattananda Yes, Karuna. Yeah. 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 And then we said, oh, Karuna. So, but it was after that when we yeah, were using the Mahabharata, the, the, the back and forth. Right. Your Honor, I object. He was saying, <laughs> But anyway. <laughs> yeah, Mathananda will be a one. His name is Karunananda. That's why I put into the order, you know. But anyway, his name is Karunananda. Don't worry, you are still Samanara. Okay? Don't, don't feel guilty that I am not Samanara, maybe. Okay? You're still fine. Don't feel guilty, okay? <laughs> so, so what are the, uh, the Upekkananda, what are the five hindrances? You have to see the order. He's a Upekkananda, I'm Mudita. Oh, Mudita, yeah, Mudita. Okay, so could you tell me... Um, yeah you see i'm going to ask one by one because we have to know if you know very well then i'm not going to explain anymore that's why so because of you maybe somebody also learn you know okay please sloth and torpor uh, restlessness and worry uh, okay so you have to say into the number one number two oh, number oh. three number four number five number one sensual desire and number 2 aversion number 3 sleepiness and dullness number 4 restlessness and anxiety and number 5 doubt so please memorize it number 1 2 3 4 5 okay you have to memorize that way and then you already know the six hours recognize it release it relax, relax tension and tightness and then re smile and return and oh, sorry re return repeat so this is the already six hours also i call the harmonious practice or right effort so when you know the five hindrances you know the six hours so if any five hindrances arise in your mind you use the 
six hours. So that way you see the hindrances will be weaker, weaker, weaker. That's why I, at the beginning I always say the meditators please memorize the five hindrances and then six hours. So that way you'll understand this meditation very well. Okay. What is the um, meaning of the jhana? Can anybody answer? Jhana, yes. Bhante uh, to the level of understanding? Yes. Bhante used two words actually. One is the level of understanding. Another one is the stage of meditation. In his book you will find it. But I, I, I use a stage of meditation. So a stage of meditation is very practical for me, so I use that word. So, and then, okay, that's all. So you know the five hindrances, you know the six hours, and then you understand what is the meaning of the jhana, you know. So now I'm going to read this sutta, then you should uh, pay attention, then after listening uh, the sutta, if you have any questions, you can ask me. Thus, if I heard on one occasion, the Venerable Ananda was living at uh, Veluva Gamaka near Visali. So, this is the place where Venerable Ananda was living. And thus, if I heard, you, I already explained that, right? Now, on that occasion, the householder, the Sama of Athaganagara, and arrived at Pataliputta for some business or other. Then he went to a certain monk in Kukuta's Park and after paying homage to him, he sat down at one side and asked him. You see, he was the religious person, that's why when after approaching to Venerabhananda, he respect to him and then sat one side. Then he started asking the questions. Where does the Venerable Ananda live now, Venerable Sir? I wish to see the Venerable Ananda. The Venerable Ananda is living at Veluva Gamaka near Visali householder. When the householder Dasama had completed his business at Pataliputta, he went to the Venerable Ananda at Veluva Gamaka near Visali. After paying homage to him, he sat down at one side and asked him, Venerable Ananda, has any one thing been proclaimed by the Blessed One who knows and sees, accomplished and fully enlightened, wherein if a monk abide diligent, ardent and resolute, his unliberated mind comes to be liberated, his undestroyed things come to be destroyed, and he attains the supreme security from bondage that he had not attained before. So this is the first question. So Venerable Ananda is going to answer. He said, yes, householder, one such thing has been proclaimed by the Blessed One. What is that one thing, Venerable Ananda? So he is not going to explain the jhanas. So that's why at the beginning I asked you what is the meaning of the jhana. Okay, so if you don't understand the meaning of the jhana, then when I will say, okay, this is the first jhana, this is the second jhana, this is the third jhana, this is the fourth jhana, <laughs> so that you will not understand very clearly. So in the f here he is going to explain, here householder quite secluded from sensual pleasure, secluded from unwholesome states. A monk enters upon an averse in the first jhana, which is accom accompanied by thinking and examining the rejoin happiness born of seclusions. So this is the first jhana. So when you attain the first jhana, there are five factors will be present. Thinking thought, examining thought, joy, happiness and unification of mind. Five factors will be present. So you can ask me, Bhante, where did you get the five factors? So here, the Venerable Ananda didn't mention the five factors. The Sutta number 43, section number 9. 
Suksha number 40, Maha Vidala Sutta, you'll see Yeah, section number 19. 19, you can see that. Maha Vidala Sutta. Section number 19. Friend, how many factors does the first jhana have? Friend, the first jhana has five factors. Here, when a bhikkhu has entered upon the first jhana, there occur a thinking thought examining thought, joy, happiness, and unification of mind. You got the five factors, right? These are the five factors. So here is a applied thought, a sustained thought, a rapture. So I don't use this word. Thinking thought, examining thought, joy, happiness, and unification of mind. So you got now five factors, right? So when you attain the first jhana, thinking thought, examining thought, joy, happiness and unification of mind will be present and five hindrances will be absent. Then you attain the first jhana. Clear? Right? So if any hindrances rise in your mind, you are dropped from the jhana. Then you have to again radiate loving kindness to yourself or maybe if you practice the sixth direction, so you have to begin, you have to start from the beginning. Then you very quickly, you let in the first jhana again. So he considered this and understand it does. The first jhana, the first samatha and vipassana jhana. You see, what is the meaning of the twin? T. T means tranquil. Yes. W is wisdom. Wisdom. Inside. Inside. Meditation. Meditation. So here, W wisdom is through the this meditation you can see the dependent origination. So one who see the dependent origination, of course he will ha has the wisdom. Whenever you are practicing jhana, so you'll know, you understand. And then when you attain the base of infinite consciousness, you will see the link of dependent originations. So that's why the Venerable Sariputta, he could see the dependent originations very clearly. So whenever Buddha gave the Dhamma talk to the monks, he said, O bhikkhus, O monks, Venerable Sariputta has wisdom. So he could see the deep link of dependent origination. And then insight. So when you attend the first jhana, in the first jhana, you have tranquility and insight. Tranquility and insight. When you attend the second jhana, you have tranquility and insight. When you attain the third jhana, you have tranquility and insight. But it will be more than before, more than first, first jhana. And then when you attain the fourth jhana, you have, of course you have tranquility and insight. So when you see the, the middle land discourses of the Buddha Majjhima Nikaya index, you see tranquility insight, tranquility insight. But the Buddha never said, okay, only if you practice only vipassana, then you can attain Nibbana. If you attain loving kindness, you cannot attain Nibbana. 
you can say that because in the Metta Sutta, the last time I explained the section number 10, Dittincha Anupagamba Silava Dasanena Sampanno Kamesu Vinaya Gedang Nahi Jatu Gabba Siya Punaratiti Dittincha Anupagamba, not to be, not to practice the wrong view, you know. Silava, keep the precept. Dasanena Sampanno Kamesu Vinaya Gedang Kamesu means in the sens sensual realm. Vinaya Gedang Nahi, that means no. Nahi, Nahi Jatu. That means will not reborn. Gabba in mother womb will not come. Punaratiti will not come back again. That means you are in Nibbana. So this is in the Metta Sutta, section number 10. So it is very, this Sutta is very clear that if you practice loving kindness, you must attain the Nibbana. So, from the Majjhima Nikaya, Sutta number 149, section number 10, when you'll see Samatha and Vipassana, tranquility and insight, evenly yoked together, never separated. I was studying in Myanmar three years, ten months. I mostly I studied the commentary, the path of purification. The path of purification actually not in the in the Tipitaka, but this is the out of the Tipitaka, out of the Buddhist scripture. That one is commentary. You know. So after coming at Dhammasukha Meditation Center after finishing the four uh, four months. I never, I never, I never read the commentary. I only read the sutta. Because commentary make me a lot of confusion, you know. When the Buddha passed away after five years, after five hundred years, the Buddhist scripture written down in the Fourth Buddhist Council in Sri Lanka. So that time also there were Arahan. And then, 500, upper, maybe the later on, the commentary, commentary written down. And there were some commentators who didn't practice meditation, but they are very, very good as scholar, you know. So, Ewa Me Sutang, who said that, where, whose place, so they explain in detail. So that's why I, I, don't, I don't read actually the commentary. It's the Sutta language is a very simple language and very easy to understand. So here the Venerable Ananda explained the first jhana, the first samatha and vipassana jhana that means in that when you attain the first jhana, the first jhana have tranquility and insight. Is condition and intentionally produce. <coughs> but whatever is condition and intentionally produced is impermanent, subject to cessation. If he is steady in that, he attained the distractions of the taints. That means you attain Nibbana. That means when you attain the first jhana, you have potential to attain Nibbana in this sutta mentioned very clearly. If he is steady in that, he attains the distractions of the taints. That means you attain Nibbana. Okay, you attain the first jhana now. From that, if you continue, you have potential to attain Nibbana. Who knows? Somebody may attain very quickly. Right? Maybe in the past life they fulfilled the perfection. Right? 
But if he does not attain the distraction of the ten because of that desire for the Dhamma, that delight in the Dhamma, then with the distractions of the five lower fetters, he attains one due to reappear spontaneously in pure abodes, and they attain finally Nibbana with ever returning from that world. So if you have little bit craving, you will attain anagami, but you will not attain Raham. You will reborn Suddhavasa. In the Brahma world there is one realm, Suddhavasa, called here pure abodes. So in that stage, you will attain Nibbana. Okay? This is the one thing proclaimed by the Blessed One, who is knows and sees, accomplished and fully enlightened, wherein if a monk abides diligent, ardent and resolute, his unliberated mind comes to be liberated, his undestroyed tents come to be destroyed, and he attained the supreme security from bondage that he had not attained before. So this is the first jhana. Do you have any question about the first jhana? It's clear, right? So that's why I said, when you attain the first jhana, you'll know yourself. Now I attain the first jhana. So now he is going to explain the second jhana. With the, with the stealing of thinking and examining thought, a monk enters upon and abides in the second jhana, which has self-confidence and stillness of mind, without thinking and examining thought, with joy, happiness of collectedness. That means when you attain the second jhana, thinking thought, examining thought, a stop rising, will not rise anymore. Only joy, happiness and unification of mind, five, three factors will be present. So that time your mentally barbarizations have to stop. Your meditation will be the auto automatically radiate and you'll have the self-confidence the Buddha said already here which has self-confidence wow this meditation is really work I have to continue I should not stop it so you have to continue to see more and more what will be the next what will be the next, right? So here one thing, what is the difference between joy and happiness? Whenever I give Dhamma talk any place, many meditators ask me this question. So joy means when you attend the first jhana, you were so excited, delighted, you know. And happiness means if whole body and mind, if it's so comfortable, this is the happiness. Okay? So the second jhana, thinking thought, examining thought, will not arise. Only joy, happiness and unification mind will be present. Hindrances will be absent. Hindrances will not arise. He considered this and understand it thus. This second jhana, the second samatha and vipassana jhana, second tranquility and insight jhana, is conditioned and intentionally produced. But whatever, whatever is conditioned and intentionally produced is impermanent, subject to cessation. You cannot control, hey, don't arise in my mind. Can you say to the to the hindrances, hey hindrances, so don't come in, don't disturb me. 
never listen to you. It will arise and it will pass away. It will cease. So you cannot control. There is nothing control here. Just you watch it. Okay, you know, you understand. If hindrances arise, use the six hours, that's all. Some meditators think that, okay, maybe, I don't know, this hindrances is disturbing me a lot and meditation is not for me, so I want to leave. When I, I was here many years ago, I was sitting there, one guy came from Hong Kong, he was sitting there. So he couldn't develop his meditation very well. Bhante told him to practice loving kindness meditation. He cannot bring the loving kindness in his mind. He, he went to Bhante every morning and I said, I cannot bring the loving kindness. Okay, I give you forgiveness meditation. You practice forgiveness. So, even though when he is practicing forgiveness meditation, he was thinking he was fighting with his ice girlfriend. <laughs> okay? He couldn't develop. And when I was sitting there, and I determined that, from 1, 1, 1.30 to 5.30, one sitting, four hours, I'll not break up my meditation. And then the, there is another bhikkhuni came from also Australia. And she, she said, Bhante, Bhante. That time my meditation was very good, you know, and they disturbed me. I said, what are, what are you doing here? I am practicing, you cannot see that. Sorry, sorry, Bhante. That guy want to leave. Why? He couldn't practice meditation well. He cannot bring up loving kindness. Bhante said to him, for practicing forgiveness meditation, still he couldn't develop. Then I told him, okay, please go out. And we went outside and I asked him, okay, could you tell me, how do you practice? He said, you know, one day when I closed my eyes, I could see my ex-girlfriend, how, how did I fight with her? <laughs> and I told him, this is not the way how you were practicing. Okay. When you and your girlfriend went, the restaurant. So, both of you have the happy moment. You smile with your girlfriend and your girlfriend also smile with you. Remember the wholesome thought, not, not any negative. Wholesome things, right? Remember all those things and keep smiling. When I told him like that, so we took the tea together and he went outside. Within 10 minutes, his meditation progressed. Within 10 minutes. And I was in the restroom and he said, Bante, Bante, what happened? I was scared when he was howling. I got it now. I got it now. What happened? I could develop meditation now. Okay, this is the good sign. You should go to Bhante tomorrow morning. Bhante is going to change your meditation. And he went to Bhante Vi and Bhante Vi said, Okay, you should not practice loving uh, forgiveness meditation anymore. You should practice loving kindness. And he practiced loving kindness. Eventually, he ate in the food jhana at the end of the retreat. You see? So that's why whenever you practice meditation, please 
don't bring any negative thought in your mind. Keep smiling all the time, all the time happy feeling you have to bring up in your mind, okay? So, whatever is conditioned and intentionally produced is impermanent, subject to cessation. If he is steady in that, he attain, attains the distractions of, of the things. Even in the second jhana, you have potential to attain Nibbana. In this sutta mention. From the second jhana, if you continuously practice, you have potential to attain Nibbana. To attain nib but if he does not attain the distractions of the things because of that desire for the Dhamma, that delight in the Dhamma, then with the distractions of the five lower fetters, he becomes one due to reappear spontaneously in the pure abodes and they attain the final Nibbana with ever returning from that world. This too is one thing proclaimed by the Blessed One who knows and sees, accomplished and fully enlightened, wherein if a monk avoids diligent, ardent and resolute, his unliberated mind comes to be liberated, his undestroyed things come to be destroyed, and he attains the supreme security from bondage that he had not attained before. So this is the second jhana. Any question about second jhana? But the the uh, five fetters are the five hindrances, correct? Yeah, the uh, five hindrances. Right. So my understanding at Sotapanna, Srimad Tree, doubt is eliminated. At uh, Sakyanagami, lust and aversion are lessened. At Anagami, lust and aversion are eliminated. And that the final two are until Arahant. Yet this seems to say the five hindrances are eliminated, but they don't attain arahantship. Not yet. So Be because it, they have the, as he mentioned here, <coughs> yeah, he said, if he does not attain the distractions of the things, that means arahan, if he does not attain the arahan, because of that desire for the Dhamma, the desire for the Dhamma, that delight in the Dhamma, then with the distractions of the five lower fetters, he becomes, he attains anagami. Because he has little bit maybe delusion or little bit desire remain. Because of that, he will not be able to attain araham. So when he will pass away, he will reborn because he already attained ara anagami. He will reborn Suddha Vasa realm. Pure abodes means there is one realm in the Brahma world called Suddha Vasa. So he will reborn there, he or she, and he will not come back again from that realm in the human world or in the heaven or abodes. He will not come back again. He will or she attain Nibbana over there. So my, my, I guess my misunderstanding is that restlessness and slop and torpor are just can be destroyed at Anagami as well. Before our hardship. So that no, would be the full no, five. No. Aren't we confused? When you attain the Arahan, all the five hindrances finish. Yes. But before that, no. Okay. okay. Five hundreds is different from the five fetters, right? There are ten fetters. Mm -hmm. Ten fetters in five hundreds. Different things, yes. Yeah, so he mentioned, he, he is thinking about... Five hindrances, I think. ...equal to the fetters, but it's different. It's, it's yeah, that, that, that's the misunderstanding I have. Then. Okay, so the yeah, five fetters are not the five hindrances. No. Yeah. Five hindrances, no, yeah, no. Uh, this, okay. this, this, this is the different. <laughs> yeah, this is the different things. Okay. So if you, if you think, okay, when you attend the ar arahanship, then five hindrances will not rise anymore. Okay, it's clear. Thank you. Yeah. So now you, you got the second jhana, right? The third jhana. 
Again, with the fading way of joy, among others in equanimity, mindful and fully aware, still feeling happiness with the body, he enters upon and abided in the third jhana. On, on account of who is noble ones announced, he has a pleasant abiding, who has equanimity and is mindful. He considers this and understand it thus. This third jhana, the third samatha and vipassana jhana, is conditioned and intentionally produced. But whatever is conditioned and intentionally produced is impermanent, subject to cessation. If he is steady in that, he attains the distractions of the taints. But if he does not attain the distractions of the taints, because of that desire for the Dhamma, that Dhamma, the delight in the Dhamma, then with the distractions of the five lower fairies, he becomes one due to reappear spontaneously in the pure abodes and there attain final nibbana with ever returning from that world. This too is one thing proclaimed by the Blessed One who knows and sees, accomplished and full enlightened, wherein if a monk abides diligent, ardent and resolute, his unliberated mind comes to be liberated, his undestroyed tense comes to be destroyed, and he attains the supreme security from bondage that he had not attained before. So here, when you attain the third jhana, the joy stops rising. So first one, thinking, thought, examining, thought, joy, happiness and unification of mind five factors present, no hindrances, you attain first jhana. When you attain the second jhana, thinking thought, examining thought, stop rising, not rising, five hindrances absent, you, are, you attain the second jhana. So when you continuously practice radiated loving kindness to yourself or to your spiritual friend or sixth direction, then joy stop rising, only happiness and unification of mind arise, five hindrances not there, you attain the third jhana. Clear? Right? So, here every jhanas the Venerable Ananda repeated. Repeated. Why? You see, first time, second time, and third time. During the Buddha's time, many people especially the, when the Buddha delivered a Dhamma talk to the local people. There were many uneducated people. So he, he knew that, you know, if I, first time maybe, when I, I deliver the talk, the first time, maybe they will not be able to catch what I am talking about. And second time he said again, second time they got something. And third time it's become very clear. That's why when, whenever you read any sutta, then you'll see Buddha said one time, for the second time, and for the third time. So that way, the sutta language is very beautiful, you know. So you'll be the enlightened one. So now you got the third jhana, right? And now he's going to explain the fourth jhana. Again, with the abandoning of ple pleasure and pain, with the previous disappearance of joy and grief, a monk enters upon and abides in the fourth jhana, which has neither pain nor pleasure and purity of mindfulness due to equanimity. He considers these and understand it thus. The fourth jhana, the fourth samatha and vipassana, is conditioned and intentionally produced, but whatever is conditioned and intentionally produced is impermanent, subject to cessation. If he is steady in that, he attains the distractions of the taints. But if he does not attain the distractions of the taints, because of that desire for the Dhamma, that the delight in the Dhamma, then with the distractions of the five lower fetters, 
he becomes one to two, reappears spontaneously in the pure worlds, and there attain the final nibbana without ever returning from that world. This too is one thing proclaimed by the Blessed One, who knows and sees, accomplished and fully enlightened, wherein if a monk avoids diligent, ardent and resolute, his unliberated mind comes to be liberated, his undestroyed tense come to be destroyed, and he attains the supreme security from bondage that he had not attained before. So when you meditate continuously, then you'll see happiness stop rising, happiness will not rise. Only unification of mind will be the present. Hindrance is not there. Then your feeling from the center of your chest, you say you're feeling to go to the top of your head. So some meditators, when they start practicing meditation, you know, at the beginning they radiate loving kindness to, to self, and then radiate loving kindness to a spiritual friend. They feel very happy, you know. They feel warm and glowing feeling in the center of their chest. And the, later on, they think, what is my feeling? What is my feeling? They couldn't find it, you know. But actually, this feeling is there. And feeling good to top, the, top of their head. So if you see very carefully, then you're feeling good to top of your head. Don't press down. Let it be there. This is the good sign. You know, so that time you attain the fourth jhana. So when you attain the fourth jhana, then I'm going to change your meditation. You have to practice the sixth direction. So most of the time the Blessed One explain to the monks sixth direction meditation. Because those monks were the advanced meditators. So whenever you read any sutta from Majjhima Nikaya or from the Sanyutta Nikaya, the connected discourses, you'll see the Blessed One said, O monks, please practice the sixth direction. So he, talk, he delivered his Dhamma talk to the monks, the sixth direction. So now you got the uh, uh, first jhana, second jhana, third jhana and fourth jhana. So through the loving kindness meditation, you can attain the first jhana, second jhana, third jhana, and fourth jhana. After that, then you will practice the sixth direction. So sixth direction, because you are feeling the top of your head right now. So what do you have to do? In the sutta mention, let me read the first First one, then I'll explain very clearly. Again, a monk abides pervading one quarter with a mind imbued with loving kindness, likewise the second, likewise the third, likewise the fourth, so above, below, around, and everywhere, and to all as to himself. He abides pervading the all encompassing world with a mind imbued with loving kindness, abundant, exalted, immeasurable, without hostility and without ill will. This is talking about retaining the food, samatha and vipassana jhana. Commonly actually called a beautiful abiding. Whose name is Subhana? Ah, oh, you see? So when you attain the food jhana, here the Buddha talk about beautiful abiding. So Subhana plus Ananda, one who enjoyed the beautiful, that means four jhana. So, you have to practice the sixth direction. He has said, likewise the second, likewise the third, likewise the fourth. What does it mean? That means, when you radiate loving kindness from here, so may all living beings be happy, peaceful, free from suffering, free from danger, 
free from difficulty. You'll see from here forward five minutes, limitless. Okay. Like with the second, from here backward five minutes. Like with the third, from left side five minutes. And like with the fourth, then from here right side five minutes. Above, from here up and below five minutes. Then all directions. Okay. This is the candle, as I said last night, right? This is the candle. When you light it, then candle giving the light all directions. So all directions. Try to visualize candle in front of you, and then you start radiating loving kindness to all directions. Then you'll see expansion will occur. The all directions, your radiations will go away. So you feel it. So this meditation is the feeling and a smiling meditation as I said. When you practice it, you must feel and then keep smiling. So keep a smiling means you develop wholesome all the time. You develop the wholesome all the time. So when you feel tension and tightness in your head, you see tension and tightness, okay, you you were the serious practitioner. Okay, I want to practice. Don't disturb me because I am the serious meditator. So that way you will get a headache very quickly, you know. <coughs> so I met first monks in Myanmar. When he saw them, hello Bhante, how are you? Don't disturb me, I am the serious practitioner. Okay, that's fine. No problem. Because he's the serious practitioner. <laughs> Angry. So, who are loving kindness practitioner? You see, whenever you see them, Hello, how are you? Good morning. Big a smile, calm. Because they are practicing loving kindness practitioner. So whenever you go outside, don't expect from others, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, hi, hello. You have to say first. So that way you are practicing loving kindness. Why you have to expect from others? Right? If you expect from others, that means you are not practicing loving kindness. Okay? So in this section the blessed one x so you do the uh, sixth direction and you are still practicing loving kindness so from the sixth or uh, when you practice sixth direction because you are still practicing loving kindness then your meditation will change from loving kindness to the compassion and that stage name will be the, the base of infinite space. So you will have only mind, no body. Of course when you break up the meditation, then you will see, oh you have beautiful body already. But when you are in the deep meditation, you have only mind, no body. When I was in bronze in New York, one guy came, actually I was still in one Cambodian temple. In New York, many people want to practice meditation, you know, because they have a lot of depression, a lot of stress, you know. So they go to the Buddhist monastery, you know, the church online, they go to the Buddhist monastery for practicing meditation. But some monks, they're scared. They don't allow them. Everyone, don't come because I don't, I don't know you. So I opened the door and he said, I want to practice meditation. He's a very big guy, you know. Okay, please come. Because that temple is my, not my temple. It's the Cambodian temple. But I still allow him. 
the abbot is there. I, I didn't take the permission from him in here. Okay, have a seat. You should uh, listen to me first and then you should practice meditation, okay? Okay, that's fine. So, okay, close your eyes. He close his eyes. You listen my instructions and then you practice. He close his eyes and I am giving the instructions to him. And even five minutes not finished, he said, No, 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 I cannot, I cannot close my eyes. What happened? I am almost lose, uh, losing my body. He said, What? <laughs> I didn't want to lose my body. <laughs> he said, I never practiced like this before. I just open my eyes and then I practice. And I told him, I never teach like that because uh, we practice by closing our eyes. He said, no, no, I have to leave now. Okay, bye-bye. He left. <laughs> so, when your meditation change from loving kindness to compassion, how will you recognize? How will you understand? Your mind will be very soft, like cotton. You know, when somebody practice two hours, three hours, four hours, this is tears is fall down, falling down, you know, you see. Compassion arises in their mind. And then they feel that they are they're sitting almost like on the ocean, on the sky, such an experience will occur in their mind. So, the meditation will change from loving kindness to the compassion. That one is the characteristic of the compassion. If you read uh, David's book, you'll find there. His book, uh, in, his, in his book, explained very clearly the path to Nibbana. So, here he considered this and understand it does. The deliverance of mind through loving kindness is conditioned and intentionally produced. But whatever is conditioned and intentionally produced is impermanent, subject to cessation. If he is still in that, he attains the distractions of the tense. But if he does not attain the distractions of the tense because of that desire for the Dhamma, that the delight in the Dhamma, then with the distractions of the five lower affairs, he becomes one due to reappear spontaneously in the pure abodes, and there attain the final nibbana without returning from that world. This too is one thing proclaimed by the Blessed One, who knows and sees, accomplished and fully enlightened, wherein if a monk abides a diligent, ardent and resolute, he is unliberated mind comes to be liberated, his undisturbed tense come to be destroyed, and he attained the supreme security from bondage that he had not attained before. Okay, this is the loving kindness. And now he's going to talk about the compassion. So I already explained compassion, what experience you will get it, right? So when you practice loving kindness six directions, your meditation will change from loving kindness to the compassions. So that one is the blessed one, Venerable Ananda is going to talk here. Again, a monk abides perverting one quarter with a mind imbued with compassion, karuna. Okay? The likewise the second, likewise the third, likewise the fourth, so above, below, around, and everywhere, and to all as to himself. He avoids perverting the all-encompassing world with a mind in bitter compassion, abundant, exalted, and immeasurable, without hostility and without error. This is the first arupa. Arupa means immaterial. First arupa, samatha and vipassana state, or the realm of infinite space. 
So that's why when your meditation change from loving kindness to the compassion, that stage is the base of infinite space. No rupa, no material, immaterial. You experience that. He considered this and understand it thus. That this deliverance of mind through compassion is conditioned and intentionally produced. But whatever is conditioned and intentionally produced is impermanent, subject to cessation. If he is steady in that, he attains the distractions of the tense. You see, even though when you attain the base of infinite space, compassion, that stage you have potential to attain Nibbana. So here mentioned, if he is steady in that, he attains the distractions of the taint. That means you attain Nibbana. But if he does not attain the distractions of the taints because of that desire for the Dhamma, that the delight in the Dhamma, then with the distractions of the five lower feathers, he becomes one due to re reappear spontaneously in the pure abodes and they attain the final Nibbana without ever returning from that world. This too is one thing proclaimed by the Blessed One who knows and sees, accomplished and fully enlightened, wherein if a monk avoids diligent, ardent and resolute, his unliberated mind comes to be liberated, his undestroyed tends come to be destroyed, and he attains the supreme security from bondage that he had not attained before. So this is the base of infinite space compassion meditation. So when you know how to practice loving kindness, six direction, compassion easy. Compassion also that you just exactly like loving kindness. Forward compassion, five minute backward, left side, right side, above, below, same way. You practice that. So when you practice a compassion meditation then you'll see your meditation will change from compassion to joy. So how do you understand that? You see in your mind, strong joy will arise. That one we call the uplifted joy. This is not the joy when you attend the first jhana, second jhana, and third jhana, and fourth jhana. This is uplifted joy, that joy will arise. And you will see that the vibration, the link of the link of dependent origination, when your mind is very sharp, you see one snap of the finger, hundred thousand consciousness arising, passing away, arising, passing away, arising, passing away. You will see that, wow! I am not saying to rise it, but it's still it's arising and passing away, it's still arising, passing away, still arising and passing away, and uplifted joy will rise in your mind. What is arising? You want to control it? Cannot. And passing away. Then in your mind, you the impermanence you understand that everything is impermanent what is impermanent is suffering and there is no i no me not this is not me this is not my this is not i am impersonal thought will arise in your mind that stage and you understand now rising, passing away, rising, passing away. So you see the, the link, the, the vibration, the link of dependent origination when your mind is very sharp and uplifted joy will arise in your mind. Okay? So again, a man avoid perverting one quarter with a mind imbued with joy. Likewise the second, likewise the third, likewise the fourth. So above, below, around and everywhere, and to all as to himself, he avoids pervading the all-encompassing world 
with their mind imbued with joy, abandoned, exalted, immeasurable, without hostility and without ill. This is the second arupa or immaterial samatha and vipassana state or the realm of infinite consciousness. This is called the base of infinite consciousness, joy. Mudita. You are the mudita, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, this is the Eurystice. Joy. So, you see, the second immaterial, that stage also have Samatha and Vipassana. You see, the first jhana have Samatha Vipassana, second jhana have more than first jhana, Samatha Vipassana, tranquility and insight. And third jhana also have Samatha Vipassana, tranquility and insight, but more than, more than first and second jhana. And the fourth jhana also have Samatha Vipassana, tranquility and insight. It's more than first, second and third. And when you attain the stage of the base of infinite consciousness, joy meditation. You are still doing the six direction, forward, backward, left side, right side, above, below. You are practicing joy meditation right now in all direction. Then you will see, your meditation will change again from that stage to the equanimity. Upekka, who is Upekkananda? You are right. <laughs> okay. So when you attain the at that stage the base of nothingness, when you attain that stage, you see, one hour, two hours, three hours, you couldn't see anything, but the Buddha already said the base of nothingness, right? When I came here um, at the beginning about one month. I practiced very well, one or two months actually. Later on, later on my mind was very wandering, you know, I, I, I couldn't practice very well. And I went, I went to Bhante, Bhante said, okay, how about you meditation? Not good. What happened? I don't know why my mind is so wandering. At the beginning, my meditation was very good, but now my mind is wandering. Okay, wake up at 3 o'clock at a cabin. You know, start from 3 o'clock to 7 o'clock, uh, 4 hours, one sitting, practice. I never wake up in my life 3 o'clock. <laughs> 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 so, he said, how I try? First day, I woke up at 3 o'clock and I was so sleepy. I sat about maybe then 20 minutes, you know, and then I went to bed again. <laughs> <laughs> and then I went to him, how about your meditation? No good. <laughs> what happened? You know, I woke up about 3 o'clock, I was so sleepy. Okay, try it today. And then I wake up, I determine, okay, I have to practice. Today I am not going to sleep. I, my cabin is right now, it's Niruda cabin actually right now. But that time was the Brahma Vihara. So that Brahma Vihara cabin I took in New, in New York. That name I took in New York. Now that one is the Niruda. So, and I started, I, I woke up 3 o'clock and practice, practicing, practicing, and I couldn't see anything. You know, I was thinking I'm just wasting my time. What I'm doing? Four hours from 3 o'clock to 7 o'clock? And I went to Bhante. Okay, so when I couldn't see anything, I broke up my meditation. And I went to Bhante for interview and he said, how about your meditation? You know what happened? I woke up 3 o'clock, uh, three, 3 to 7. And when I couldn't see anything, 
everything is empty. And I broke up my meditation and went to sleep. He said, don't do next time like that. Why? What happened? You know, the Buddha said, the base of nothingness. Did the Buddha say, yes. So, why did you break off your meditation? This is the good sign for you if you continue practicing, you have potential to attain Nibbana. Why did you break up? Okay, first, sorry, I didn't understand that. So when he explained the base of nothingness, so that stage, you're just watching your mind, watching your mind, watching. When your mind is just a little bit unbalanced, is the six hours there. So you'll see your mind is very balanced, very balanced, just watching your mind. Just a little bit unbalanced, just use the six hours. You know, don't, don't be crave, don't raise any craving there. Okay, some people, you know, when they meditate, they see that some sort of a star, beautiful star, they want to see, oh, this is very nice, I want to see more of it. So they are increasing craving. Right? You should not say that, just let it be. Use the six years, you know, whenever you see that. So from when you practice that way, that you just watching your mind, watching your mind. And from that stage, you have the potential uh, to attain the, the base of neither perception nor non-perception. Right? And then you'll see feeling, perfection and consciousness. This three Dhamma will stop. When I stop, everything I stop. Then in your mind, the huge joy will arise in your mind that you never experience in human life. Okay? So that time you will attain the path of history mantra. So, if you think that, okay, now I attain already path of history mantra, maybe I should have stopped my meditation. No, you have to continue. So when you again sit, watching your mind, watching your mind, then second time, again, feeling, perception and consciousness stop. Again, the strong joy will rise in your mind. Then that time you will attain the fruition of his Tevantra. So that time your mind will be very strong. Your foundation very strong. You never fall down from the, the path of his Tevantra. But if you just attain the path of history mantra and you, 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 you don't attain the, the fruition of history mantra, you may, you may fall down from there. But when you attain the fruition of history mantra, that means your foundation is very strong. So only seven times you are reborn, whether in the human realm or in the heaven. Only seven times. After seven times, then you will attain Nibbana. Now you got a history mantra, right? So when you attain the stream and tra, then three things will destroy from your mind. We call Sakayaditi, Visikicha, Silapata Paramasa. Sakayaditi means what? It means this is me, this is my, this is I am, just thinking. Disappear from your mind. There is no I, no me, no mind. Just thinking arises in your mind. Sakyaditi silabata paramasa. Silabata paramasa means right and rituals. You see, the most of the monastery, most of the temple, when you go, 
they follow the traditional traditionally Buddhism. You know? So they go to the temple, offer the incense, candle, and they say, Buddha, please bless me. You know, I want to attain Nibbana. Please give me Nibbana, okay? They pray to the Buddha. This is right and rituals practice. The Buddha said, I cannot give you whatever you want from me, I cannot give you. My Dhamma is immediately effective if you practice it. If you practice it, come and see my teaching. So after seeing, try to understand. When you understand it, please practice. After practicing, if you think that this is good for me, accept it. Otherwise, you can go, you can leave. I asked the Bhante V when I came here, why did you become monk? He said, you know, my mom was Christian. Uh, my mom was Jewish. And then my father was Christian. But I am Buddhist monk. Why? Why did you become Buddhist monk? Can I know? He said, only the one word of the Buddha. Come and see. He said, Come and see. Ehi pasiku. Come and see my Dhamma. So, he allowed everyone Come and see my teaching. So because of that word, my whole life changed. You know, I started practicing meditation and I went to see the Dhamma. And I practiced myself. And I understood his teaching. Then I decided to become a monk. That's why I am a Buddhist monk right now. Wow, then I really respect you. You see? So whenever we took the lunch together at the dining hall, I have actually many questions. Maybe at least one or two, one or two or three. I asked him, then he also ready for answer. And one day I was quiet. He said, what happened to you? You don't have any question today? No, Bhante. You are not smiling. So that time actually I was thinking something in New York. <laughs> so, you see, that's why uh, after coming here, um, I think I'm the only one who asks a lot of questions. You know, and one day he said, you know, I love this little friend because he asks a lot of questions. And then I saw here many meditators came from the different countries and they said, Pante, Pante, please ask the questions. Please ask the questions. You know, when you ask the questions, we can learn a lot of things. But we don't know what we are going to ask. But when you ask, the Pante answer very clearly, so we can learn a lot of things. So the sutta is already finished, but I, my reading is not finished yet. Okay, let me read and then end of the sutta, you see. Okay, equanimity. Again, a monk's avoid forbidding one quarter with a mind imbued with equanimity, likewise the second, likewise the third, likewise the fourth. So above, below, around, and everywhere, and to all as to himself, he averts pervading the all-encompassing world with a mind in with equanimity, abandoned, exalted, immeasurable, without hostility and without illusion. This is the third arupa and immaterial samatana vipassana state or the realm of nothingness. So nothingness, when you attain that stage, equanimity, your vipassana will be very strong. Insight will be very strong. When you attain the 
the base of nothingness. You know? So he considered this and understand it thus. This deliverance of mind through the equanimity is conditioned and intentionally produced, but whatever is, whatever is a condition and intentionally produced is impermanent subject to cessation. If he is still in that, he attains the distractions of the taints, but if he does not attain the distractions of the taints because of that desire for the Dhamma, that delight in the Dhamma, then with the distractions of the five lower feathers, he becomes one due to reappear spontaneously in the pure boards and they attain the final nibbana without returning from that world. These two one things proclaimed by the blessed one who knows and sees accomplished and fully enlightened, wherein if a monk avoids diligent, ardent and resolute, his unliberated mind comes to be liberated, his undestroyed taints comes to be destroyed, and he attains the supreme security from bondage that he had not attained before. Now, Venerable Ananda is going to speak. When the Venerable Ananda had spoken, the householder Dasama of Atakanagara said to him, Venerable Ananda, now he is going to the, the, the householder of Dasama is is going to give the simile, you know. Just as if a man seeking one entrance to a hidden treasure came all at once upon eleven entrances to a hidden treasure, so too, while I was seeking one draw to the deathless, I have come all at once to here of eleven drawers to the deathless. Just as if a man had a house with eleven doors and when that house caught on fire, he could flee to safety by any one of these eleven doors. So I can flee to safety by any one of these eleven doors to the deathless. So this is the house. This house has 11 doors, you know. If you have the fire, so you can use anyone and then run away. Right? So that way you can protect yourself. So he came actually to know only, only about one door, but he saw 11 doors. You know? That means he got a lot of things. He learned a lot of things from the Ananda. He was so excited. He was very happy. So, Venerable Sir, these sectarians who live and seek a teacher's fee for their teachers. <laughs> so, he want to acknowledge to the teachers, you know, I learned a lot of things. At least I should give some something to him. So, he said, Venerable Sir, these sectarians will even seek a teacher's fee for their teachers. Why shouldn't I make an offering to the Venerable Ananda? Then the householder Dasma of Anataka Nagara assembled the Sangha of monks from Pataliputta and Visali. Sangha means he invited more than four monks. We were talking with the Greek in the dining hall before coming here about the Metananda or the higher ordinations. So Sangha we call Sangha if more than four monks present one place. One, two, three ordinary monks. If four, we call Sangha. Four and plus. So when we'll get the full ordinations, like here, eleven all of you, the so eleven meditators, you got the ordination here, right? Only me, I can ordain you. But when I'll take the Mathananda or I'll take you to the uh, to get the full ordinations, I cannot do alone. I need the Sangha. And also, of course, I need the Sima Hall. You know? So, we have the Shima Hall here already. That made, uh, but uh, 
that one we ha we have to do some sort of the vineyard activities you know we needed 20 monks to make it as a shima 20 monks have to be present there and they will they will put one pillar and they recite the kamawasa another pillar they recite the kamawasa another pillar they recite the kamawasa so 20 monks will be must be present so that way okay we have the shima but we need the sangha if somebody want to become higher full ordination otherwise we cannot make it that's why I said to Matananda, if you want to become full ordination, because he called me before coming here, and I told him that, do you want to become full ordination? He said, yes. Okay, if you want to do that, you can come to my center in New York. So, there is one Burmese temple, they have the Shima Hall, so I can invite the Sangha. So, Sangha means four and plus, four and more, we call Sangha. So at least we have to invite the five monks because in this country according to the discipline rules we need 10 monks actually but it's very difficult to find 10 monks in New York you know so if we have the Sangha enough <coughs> so we, we invite the Sangha and we'll go to the Shima Hall we also invite him to go there and we we'll do the, some sort of we we'll recite the Kamawasa then he can get the full ordination we can we'll ask a, a, a few questions okay are you manusa are you human being he has to say yes venerable sir so then we can ask him a few questions so he has to say yes if he said no okay go out you cannot become monk <laughs> he has to say yes so and there are some a few uh, some diseases if somebody have that we can uh, we cannot ordain them this is the according to discipline rules so i'll i'll explain later what what are the diseases you know if someone have uh, you know, their skin become the white how to say in english leprosy 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 if somebody have leprosy you cannot get the uh, high ordination and also there are some more uh, diseases also if you have that you cannot get so I'll explain later on all those the rules so uh, we are talking with the Greek in the dining hall about the Sangha so there are some rules and then even though when you do the offering Okay, most of my people, especially Buddhist people from Bangladesh, they want to do Sangadana. Offering to the ordinary monks and offering to the Sangha is different. So when you offer to the ordinary monks, of course you gain merit, but when you offer to the Sangha, you gain more get merit. Because when you mention the Sangha, the, all the Buddhas present there, all the Buddhas, the Buddha, all the Buddhas, including Gautama Buddha. So, Mayang Bhante, we call him Pali. Mayang Bhante, Imang Bikkang Saparikarang Anuttarang Bikku Sanghasa. Bhikkhu Sangasa means the community of the monks. Dema, we are going to offer. Bhikkhu Sangasa means the, we are going to offer to the Sangha. So that way you will gain a lot of merit. So most of my people, especially from the Bangladesh, Bangladesh, Bangladesh they want to do Sangadana, Sangadana, Sangadana. So already the David and Christian, they participated two times at my center, the big ceremony. So they, they, they know already. So they try to do that. And then before coming here, and you know, as I know, when someone offer some things to the meditators, they gain a lot of merit. So I was thinking that I will offer something to the 
meditators here at Dhammasoka. So I should not miss this, this great chance. So I said to the sister and then David, okay, I want to offer one day, I want to offer the food. So this morning, I was talking with one of my supporter, one of my supporters in New York. Hey, do you know I'm going to offer the dana at the Dhammasuka Meditation Center, you know? And he said, Bhante, I also want to donate. <laughs> <laughs> so please offer for me. I said, okay, I'm going to put your name there. <laughs> so, you know, if you want to offer the food, the meditation center in Myanmar, you have to give the name three months before. Otherwise, no space. Because Myanmar people think that the people who are practicing at a meditation center, all the time they keep the precept. They never break up the precept. And they develop. They meditate. They gain a lot of wholesome. So that time, if I offer even one glass of water, I'll gain a lot of merit. My mom, she always practiced meditation. You know? And I call almost every day, I call to her. And she said, Bhante, I am going to practice meditation the another monastery. I said, oh, great. Okay, I'm going to offer some money for you, so you'll buy the one big bag of the rice, and then you offer to the meditation center. So they'll cook the rice and offer to the all the monks, all the meditators. That way you'll, you'll get a lot of merit. She was very happy. You know? So I'm thinking maybe after tomorrow, but I got now one donor and maybe I'll get maybe more, you know? So I'll give the one announcement. Okay, Damasuka have 10 days retreat right now. And if somebody willingly, intentionally want to offer the food, so you can offer, we can accept that. I don't know how many people we can get it. There are some people that really want to offer, you know. So, Venerable Ananda gave only one Dhamma talk. So, the householder Dasama was very happy. He learned a lot of things from him by listening only one Dhamma talk. The householder of the Dasama of Anatta uh, Atakanagara assembled the Sangha of monks from the Pataliputta and Visali, and with his own hands he served and satisfied them with the various kinds of good food. He presented a pair of clothes to each monk. This is called upper robe, this is called lower robe. So, a pair. Okay? To each monk, he offered a pair's rope. So he learned a lot of things from the Ananda. A triple rope to the, he presented a triple rope to Venerable Ananda. So there is another rope, is called outer rope here. We, we call actually in, in Pali, Sangati. Sangati. So when you get the full ordination, you must need this one. You must have that one. Uh, outer rope. We call so outer rope, upper rope, and lower rope. We call triple rope. So triple rope to the venerable Ananda. He had a dwelling worth five hundred core. One core equal ten thousand pieces of gold. Built. For the venerable Ananda. You see, he gave only one Dhamma talk. He got the big monastery. So the household Dasama, he donated the big monastery. He was very lucky. You see. 
So he got a triple robes and then he also got a donation, one monastery. He just give only one Dhamma talk. He was a very lucky man, right? Lucky monk. So this this is the sutta for tonight. So you learn today the first jhana, second jhana, third jhana, fourth jhana, the base of infinite space, compassion, meditation, the base of infinite consciousness, joy, mudita, the base of nothingness, and equanimity, upekka, the base of neither perception nor non-perceptions. Right? Any more question? You, when you, from your background, I understand that you did cross legging, right? When you when you start meditation, so when cross leg. Yeah, you're sitting like me. I, when I was in Burma, I of course I did. Down many many years, right? So when you come here, say you know, Bhagi asks you to do like at three o'clock in the morning to seven. Do you do sit in the chair or do you chair? I I so the cross. Yeah, I changed because the even though when I was in Burma, I I cannot sit more than one hour. One hour I in cross like I sit only one hour. So that's the longest you can do even before you come over here. Yeah, but after coming here, I sit here four hours. Four hours just in the chair. On the chair. Not on the floor. Yeah. Okay. Because the most important is the mind. Yeah. It doesn't matter you sit on the chair on the chair. Or in the floor. There is no magic in the floor, you know. Yeah. yeah. So that's why I the most important is the mind. So you can sit comfortably and then you can sit if you can sit one hour, two hours, three hours, four hours, five hours, six hours, then your meditation you will will go the deeper, you know. So if you want to sit, maybe okay. This time I want to sit on the on the floor, maybe one hour, two hours. Then you can do it. But if you want to sit longer, please sit on the chair. No problem. But in in the way, in Burma and Thailand, their tradition is actually they allow to sit the the cushion. Not in the chair. They, they don't allow to use the chair. Even even Thailand, no. Okay, let me tell you one thing. You know, after after finishing the meditation here, when I return back to New York, I started teachings to the Bang Bangladeshi community. You know, and I allow them. Okay, please sit on the chair. And one guy came. Who never practiced meditation in his life. He is 85 years old. And when he saw, I allow everyone to sit because they are old. They are old people that cannot sit on the floor. And he came only one day and he said, I never see the people to sit in the chair and practice meditation. So I didn't want to go anymore there. What he's teaching? He never be, oh, he never got ordination in his life. You know, according to the Buddhist tradition, the Buddhist people at least one time they get the novice ordination, at least one time in their life. But he didn't get the ordination. So when I start, when I started the center. The Brahma we had a center and I rent the house. So David went there. And then someone told me that he didn't get ordination in his life, but he's more than 80 years old. And I said his relative, okay, you can come. You can ordain at my center. I'm going to support you. And he got ordination. And he practiced meditation under me. So, because that time, even though my place was very small and I accepted two, three people, four people like that for Bangladeshi community, four people. 
So he saw that one day one sutta, another day another sutta, another day another sutta. I started explaining to them. He was sitting in front of me and he said one day, Bhante, first of all, I want to apologize to you. Why? What happened? You know, when you came back from the Missouri and then you started teaching meditation to the people and then you allow the people to, to, for sitting on the, in the chair. So, I misunderstood. I never see that people sit in the chair and meditate. Because you are the only one, you allow the people for practicing meditation in the chair. And then when I, so I miss, that's why I didn't go there. I stopped going there. And now I understand the real teaching when you are giving the Dhamma talk almost every day. So I understand, so please forgive me. When he practiced himself, he understood. And I told him, okay, can you sit on the, uh, the cushion? He said, no, I cannot sit there. So now you can sit on the chair because you have the physical problem. So can you develop? Can you meditate? Yes, I can meditate. So the mind is the most important. Then he said, okay, please forgive me. He said, okay, okay, no problem. <laughs> this is what happened in New York, you know. So some people, uh, they never meditate, they never have experience, and then they try to argue, you know. But later on when they understand, they say, oh, please forgive me. They say that way. So that, that's why the most important is the, the Buddha said, come and see at the beginning. Come and see and try to understand. When you understand it, please practice it. After practicing, if you get experience, if you think that this is the truth, please accept it. Otherwise, you can live freedom. So that way, a lot of people are accepting this, his teaching. You know, freedom. So some people they just see, they never practice meditation in their. Okay, let us share the merit together, please. May suffering once be suffering free, and if we respect, fearless be. May the grief be shed, all grief, and may all beings find relief. May all beings share this merit that we, that we have to acquire for the acquisition of all kinds of happiness. May all kinds of May I be, be inhabiting a space in earth, there was a Naga so mighty power shed in this merit of ours. May the long protect the Buddha's dispensation. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu.